Prince won't stream for you, unless you're Google or Tidal, Microsoft's Windows 10 rollout plans, and an app called Smidgen makes it easier to learn a new language. Olé! It's Thursday, July 2nd, and this is Crunch Report. Would you like to know how Microsoft will roll out Windows 10 to testers and consumers and large-scale customers? Good, because I'm going to tell you. Microsoft said in a blog post this morning that there are now 5 million Windows 10 testers, Windows insiders as they're called, which is up from 3.7 million back in May. The company has collected millions of reservations, that's their wording, for Windows 10 from the public. Windows 10 will be a free upgrade from Windows 7 and Windows 8 and 8.1 users for a year, and they're hoping to get a lot of people signed up in that year. Current Windows 10 testers will get the build first among the public. Testers will get access to the code on July 29th, and then volume licensed customers will get Windows 10 on August 1st. Learning a foreign language and then using that language in the country that it's native to is hard. I should know. I've tried many times over the years. A lot of that is because traditional foreign language lessons focus on the structure of the language itself, which is very important, but doesn't always help the common traveler. A new iOS app with an Android app in the works called Smidgen wants to make that process easier by letting users look up common phrases and then hear them spoken by a native speaker. A version of the app released today now categorizes phrase books by section, cafe section, bars, shopping, stuff like that. Those are free in all of the languages that it offers, or $4.99 to unlock all categories for any language. There are some limitations, though. For example, users can only create sentences using the infinitive form of verbs, go, have, like, etc. The app supports Italian, Portuguese, English, Spanish, and French, and Smidgen is working on Swedish, Filipino, German, and Haitian Creole. The app has almost 90,000 installs, over 175 countries, with 200,000 in seed funding so far. Prince, who is currently known as Prince has pulled his music collection from Spotify, RDO, and Deezer. However, his music is still streaming on Google Music All Access and Tidal. Tidal is the high-def streaming service run by Jay-Z. Apple Music never had Prince to begin with, so they're out. Prince has previously been pretty vocal in his criticism for streaming services like Spotify, arguing that the record labels take too much revenue and through streaming deals have taken even more. Last November, Prince took both his Twitter and Facebook accounts offline and took most of his official tracks off of YouTube. In January 2014, he sued 22 fans for $1 million each for linking to bootlegs of his concerts. Back in 2010, he slammed the digital music industry in general in an interview that he did with the UK's Daily Mirror. Although yesterday he promoted a new track on SoundCloud, so he is using certain services. He doesn't hate the internet. As for the streaming services that have lost Prince access, Deezer CEO Hans Holger Albrecht tells TechCrunch, quote, people pay for our service because they want to get all the music they love in one place. Forcing consumers to go to three or four streaming services to get all the music they want will drive them back to piracy. Speaking of SoundCloud, guess who has a big update for their iOS app? New features include a new related tracks feature, shuffle, direct playlist editing, and just improving music discovery. The timing is kind of obvious. SoundCloud has some new competition from Apple, which now lets independent artists upload audio, videos, and photos through Apple Music's social platform Connect. And Apple updated GarageBand this week to publish directly to Connect as well. SoundCloud's new related tracks feature keeps it competitive by using algorithms to generate a stream of other songs a listener might also like, and the company now says it hosts 100 million tracks on its service. Dots, which is the greatest mobile game to ever be created when the Wi-Fi is down on an airplane, is getting a big upgrade with three new themes, space, mod synth, and desert. Also, a custom designer option if you want to create your own color palette. Dots was created back in 2013 under the Betaworks brand, which is based in New York. The company Play Dots became an independent company last year after raising $10 million in funding from Tencent and Graycroft. The game and its sequel, Two Dots, have been installed by 55 million people on iOS and Android combined. The Dots team says that they're actively designing new titles for 2015, which is great because I have to fly to New York soon on United Airlines and there will be a Wi-Fi meltdown because there always is. And that is the report for today and the week before our long holiday weekend. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. We are taking the day off tomorrow for 4th of July here on the U.S., so we'll see you on Monday.